my face. I feel a mortal stock and still reverberates. Everywhere I go, I drag this coffin just in case. Hello and good morning. Thank you for tuning in to The Talking Dead. My name is Michaela Sass. And I'm Marissa Savia. Today is February 6, 2013. It's a little nippy outside, isn't it? Yeah, you know who loves the cold weather? Who loves the cold weather? Zombies really enjoy it. That is so relevant. It's very relevant. Now let's get started with today's show. We often ask ourselves where it is this mythical initiative of zombies originated from. Who came up with this idea of the recently deceased coming back to life with discolored and decaying flesh and an undying thirst for brains? Well, the tale sprouted from the Sumerian epic of Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh had proclaimed that someday the dead will outnumber the living and feast upon them. More legends and myths spread throughout the history and found its way into our American culture in the 1920s. After our discoveries of these horrifying tales, narratives and novels were written, exploding the thoughts of these creatures. Zombies had now assimilated into the media. In the 1930s, zombies limped their way into the cinema. Movies such as White Zombie, Revolt of the Zombies, and Night of the Living Dead were heavily critiqued and deemed horrifying for their twisted tales. Nowadays, movies about braining demons aren't uncommon, and they are actually quite popular. For example, Day X, which came out in 2005, was a low-budget film that was highly underrated. In 2006, Enter the Zombie was, re was released, a tale that follows a group of kids who found themselves fighting against the creatures for their lives. By 2009, comedies about zombies were introduced. Zombieland was a huge hit. Now, in 2013, a romance between a zombie and a human will be open for public view and the screening of warm bodies. That's wonderful. Now I know what I'm doing this weekend, movie night. But for now, let's give a warm welcome to our surprise specialist, founder and speaker of the research, Zombie Research Society, Matt Moak. Hello and thank you. It is a pleasure to speak here with all you guys. It's a pleasure for us to have you on our show as well. Anytime. So considering you are an expert, do you have any idea as to why zombies appealed so much throughout the most recent generations? Well, we live in such uncertain times we are trapped in the age of microbiology. We know so much about diseases, at least possibilities open, that just maybe a zombie virus can be very well alive. In a metamorphical sense, people tend to like zombies because they aren't as judgmental as the average human. They don't care what you look like, and that grabs a lot of people's interests. You know a lot. Where do you get all of your information from? Uh, the Research Society and I absorbed ourselves in ways to prevail the knowledge of zombies. Every time we look at it based upon scientific and theoretical views and then tested, we have to be accurate in how zombies are portrayed and how their brains would be geared opposed to a human's. We also come up with various survival strategies for the anticipated apocalypse. Is it true you've written a book about zombies, right? Yes, it is called Everything You've Ever Wanted to Know About Zombies. It looks very informative. Well, thank you for your time, Mr. Moog. It has been a pleasure. Now let's go back to Marissa for some more information about the zombie transformation. One must suffer a single bite, no more than three, or they will die from the venom in order to convert into a zombie. The venom infests blood cells, hindering the use of platelets to create a scab to patch the, the body's injury. It is an excruciating process, considering the poison is rumored to be thick like honey and seeps throughout the victim's veins, pulsing, smoldering like fire, until the heart stops beating. Gashes such as these are often lethal, but in case you ever find yourself in the position with an essential wound, there are some steps you can follow to su attempt to survive if alone and not accessible to a doctor. The first precaution that can be taken would obviously be locating all the injuries. It's easy to get distracted by the first puncture spotted, but there may be others, and the gash that is the most fatal should be attended first. Next, it should be taken to major authority to stop the bleeding, but since you are alone, applying bandages that can put direct pressure onto the damaged skin will be helpful. If the wound is persistently bleeding, then you may have to perform stitches on yourself. Therefore, you will need needle and thread. <clears throat> this next step would be to inspect the wound yourself. Make sure there is no debris or objects that could be wedged inside your cut. Remove any objects so your skin doesn't get more damaged. Sterilize the wound as soon as you can. Wash your hands thoroughly with warm water and soap. A disinfectant agent, such as hygienic alcohol pads, should be applied after cleaning. After, apply a bandage appropriate for the injury. If the wound is too big for the band-aid, try wrapping it in some gauze or maybe sterile cloth. This will apply pressure and hopefully slow down the beating rate. Don't believe that information will be helpful sometime? Mason Smith is here, a witness of a zombie himself, to talk to us about what the experience is like. Hello, Mason. 
All right. This attack must be very hard for you to talk about, but you're willing to share it with us, aren't you? Yeah, it was a, it was a Friday night, and I heard my neighbor and his friend or roommate outside arguing. It wasn't more like arguing, it was more like, Aah! But, um, so I decided to go outside, and I guess I interrupted it. And Dave came, like, staggering up the steps. It was kind of fast, though. It was weird. And so I freaked out. And I smelled him, and it was, like, really stinky. So I kicked him, and he went over the rail, fell onto the grill, and it was, like, blood and guts all over. That's nasty. Yeah, it was, uh... Most people don't believe me, but it's it was true, and uh, it was pretty scary. That's very unfortunate. You're very lucky you survived. Yeah... I know. Thank you for your time, Mason. Any time. What a tragedy. His own neighbor pursuing an attack on him, an accidental <clears throat> murder, and the discovery that this man had been turned into the flesh-eating demon himself. All right, all you zombie fanatics. Well, that's all we have for you today. Thank you for tuning in to The Talking Dead. I'm Michaela Sass. And I'm Marissa Salvia. Join us next Wednesday for another exciting show. Have a lovely evening, everyone. Ice.